like I did with Hemant, you are going to tell me about the symposium, then you will tell me about yourself. So please, what is the symposium about? What have you, I mean, have you listened to some sessions? What, if, what is your feeling? Yes, sir. I have not listened any session yet, but uh, uh, as uh, today's symposium is all about uh, mediation, that is uh, dispute resolution and uh, dispute resolution is the process of uh, resolving dispute between uh, two different parties. Uh, I think this is about the mediation that is today's symposium. Yes. And specifically about mediation where definitely a solution is not imposed on parties and they reach a settlement on their own terms. So that is the idea is to focus on that part. And of course, you were there for some time in the inaugural address on 9th August. Of course, we, all the recordings, like I said, are available. Schedule is out there on the, in the description of this video of, on YouTube also, on the posts also. So you can also watch some of the recordings. And on the last day, on 31st, at 7 o'clock India time, we have a session on learnings and key takeaways from the symposium. So please, please be part of it. And hopefully by then you'll watch some sessions. Yes, so. Sir. So, Archana, now it's you. You tell us about yourself, discuss the topic, and I will come in if and when you want me to come in. So, please. Uh, I am uh, R.K. Archana Kudu. Uh, I, I am basically from Jharkhand, uh, India, and uh, I have uh, graduated and post-graduated in history. And uh, currently, I am pursuing PhD in Department of Tribal Studies. And uh, the... A focus area of my research is urban legends, but uh, today I will discuss about the Santhal tribe uh, who are basically living in Jharkhand. Yeah. So may I share my PPT? Yeah, yeah, please, please. Right now we can't see your screen. You want to send me the PPT? I can open it if you want. I think Hemant, her, I think signal has become weak or she's, I think it's frozen. You want to come in Hemant up till then, up till she comes back? What I'll do is up till then, I'll put the schedule up. So basically, this is what the schedule looks like. You have the, you can click for the YouTube recording. Yes, Arjuna, you're back. So actually, it is not sharing. You can. You want to send me the link? I can open it. If you send me the PPT, I can open it here. Okay. Up till that comes, I will... I'm just, I'm just going through the schedule. So basically, I mean, you can click the LinkedIn post, the Facebook post. We've gone through up till here, 12. This is the 13th we've done, hey months. Now, Arjuna. So this is what it looks like. Yes, Arjuna. You want to, are you sending it here or?
So later today we have these two sessions. Hello. Yes, sir. Sir, no. okay, no? I have shared my PPT. On what? Where have you sent it? Uh, in, uh, mail. Okay, perfect. So I'll just open it. Give me one minute. So up till then, you can tell us more about yourself. Hmm? Uh, actually, I am uh, pursuing my PhD uh, in Department of Tribal Studies, and. Uh, uh, I'm working upon urban legends, but uh, as uh, uh, today I am going to uh, discuss about Santhal tribe because uh, I personally belong from this tribe, uh, Santhal community, and uh, I live in Jharkhand state where uh, the population of uh, Santhal tribe is largest. And that's why I suppose to discuss about this tribe today and uh, how they used to uh, do mediate. Uh, that means to, to uh, dispute uh, resolution. So today I will discuss about the brief discussion about the history of Santhal tribe, their religion, their language, and the Manji region, that is uh, their administrative system. But you also want to tell us more about yourself, your where did you grow up, and all that? Uh, I, I am born in uh, Jharkhand. Uh, district uh, Hazaribagh, and uh, I did schooling my uh, my schooling in uh, Hazaribagh district, and after that I graduated from Patna Women's College, that is uh, uh, in Bihar, that comes under Patna University, and completed my post graduation from Patna University, and uh, after completing my post graduation, uh, currently I am here in Central University of Jharkhand, that is in uh, Rachi, that is the capital city of Jharkhand. Perfect. But, but tell me, have you, I mean, in terms of your living in that part where the tribes live, I mean, have you lived there or have you, I mean, you moved out into wherever you did your education? How did that work? Um, I moved out uh, for my education and there were no tribes because uh, in Bihar, the population of tribes is only 1% and uh, those 1% uh, they live in the district of Bhagalpur but I always uh, lived in the uh, Patna that is uh, the capital city of uh, Bihar so uh, there was no tri tribals because I think yeah, but, but like uh, field work and all like Hemant was saying he did field work you also did field work and you actually went and lived with them uh, actually, after taking my admission in PhD, uh, I did my uh, field work where I uh, got touch with the um, tribal peoples and uh, currently I am uh, trying to know more about them. Uh, after doing my post-graduation, uh, post um, I came and uh, uh, did my uh, field work mm -hmm. and then I am... Uh, Trying to know more about the tribal peoples of Jharkhand. But our current president is she also is she from is she a Santhal or is it? Yes, yeah, she is. She is from Santhal tribe. Oh, that's good. But she is from Odisha. Okay. 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 But the tribe is same. That is Santhal tribe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'll do is let me just open that. Your PowerPoint. Give me one minute. And then we shall go forward. You can keep telling me when to change the slide. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you can see the screen? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay. Is it showing uh, or not? May I continue? Yes, sir, oh, yeah. it is showing. Please, yeah. 
So first of all, I'd like to discuss that who are the Santhal tribes. The Santhals are the largest tribe of Jharkhand, uh, situated in the northeast part of India. It was probably on their name that the Santhal area is called the Santhal Pargana, and they are mostly settled in the district of Dumka, Goda, Paku, Sahib Ganj, and Devgar of Jharkhand. And scholars have divergent views on the origin of Santhals, as Colonel Dalton believed that they came uh, the northeastern India and proceeded towards uh, Jharkhand. He has referred to some similarities of custom and language between Santhals and some of the Aboriginal tribes of the northeastern part of India. And Hunter supposed the view uh, expressed by Dalton. And another theory traced their origin in Persia, Afghanistan, and Chinese territory. It holds that they entered India from northwest and first settled in Punjab before moving to this area. Uh, but there is no backing for this theory. And in the lowlands, they are agriculturists. In the jungles and on the mountains, they are skillful hunters, bows and arrows being their chief weapons. And on the highlands, they are cattle breeders. They have neither the sullen disposition nor the unconquerable laziness of the very old hill tribes of central India. They allegedly spent a considerable amount of time in Bengal before coming here. They went by the name Sotar in Bengal. And these were people from Paharia community who were originally from Santhal Pargana. And when the British entered in 1765 AD, the Paharia refused to accept the subjugation. And the conflict between the Santhals and Paharia resulted from inability to manage the libertarian Paharia tribe. And the Mineko zone was created in 1832-33 and it was bordered by 1338 square meters. And this was the land uh, to the Paharia tribe, given to the Paharia tribe. And the area extended across, it was re reserved for Santhal settlement. And the Saurya Paharia tribe gave the Wanji system to the Santhals. And next, I would like to come to the language of Santhal tribe. So please, next try. Yeah. Um, the Santhals speak uh, Santhali language, uh, which has some connection with the astro asiatic language. And the 92nd Amendment was passed in order to include Santali language in the 8th Schedule of Indian Constitution. It is now included in the 8th Schedule of Constitution. And next, I would like to describe about the social structure. But, but Archana, you know how to speak Santali? Mm, sir, I don't know to speak, but I can understand it perfectly. Okay. Yeah. Next is social uh, structure. And the social life of the Santhals is highly organized. A number of villages uh, form part of one local administrative unit, which is administered locally by a Parganath. Uh, he is the custodian of all social functions of the village and he settles the entire dispute. He may impose a fine on the wrongdoer. And the family is the smallest form of the society, it is nuclear in structure. And the existence of joint family is rare. The nuclear family of the Santhal consists of father, mother, and unmarried children. Married children established their own family and took food on separate herds. On the basis of authority, the family is patriarchal. On the basis of lineality and descent, the family is patrilineal. The residence is patrilocal. The inheritance and property are also patrilineal. And uh, there are many kinds of marriages among the Santhals. Uh, they are Kirin Bahu, uh, Ghardi Jave, Sangha, etc. The Santhals acquire marriage mates usually by bride price. The other ways of acquiring marriage mates are uh, service, exchange, love, elopements, uh, etc. The marriage by bride price is the, the negotiated form of marriage. The father of the boy approaches the father of the girl with marriage proposal. And the discussions on bride price is cash and in kind both. In cash, the bride price varies uh, between rupees 51 to rupees 251. But in kind, the bride price includes ornaments and dresses of the bride, dresses of the parents, grandparents, brothers and sisters of the bride. And rice, pulses, vegetables, and goat are also demanded to provide feast and hospitality to the community members. Let me, let me also put out that 
when you said bright price of 50 rupees to 250 rupees let me just put it in dollars about 1 dollar to 3 dollars <laughs> yeah, yes yes that's that's it <laughs> yes sir. okay you wanted me to move to the slide i move to the next slide next slide that is religion yeah this one uh, the Santhal religion presents a mixed picture of tribal animism, Hinduism, and Christianity. It centers around the worship and ceremonies of numerous gods and deities. The Santhals had many gods uh, whose festivals are strictly observed. Maran Guru, the great spirit, is the deity uh, to whom sacrifices are made at the Sohraya. Among some Santhals, uh, for example, Chotanagpur, Singh Bonga, the sun, is the supreme deity to whom sacrifices are made. Generally, there is no def uh, definite idea of a beneficent god, but countless uh, demons and evil spirits are uh, propagated and ancestors are worshipped at the Sohrai festival. Their principal god or deity is Singbonga, who is the sun god. Mm. And Maranguru or the god of the mountain is the highest god after him. Other important village deity of Santhals is Jahir era. Besides these, other principal deities of the Santhals are Gosai Hera, Pargana Bonga, Manji Haram Bonga, Odak Bonga, and Abde Bonga. The Santhals also believe in ancestral spirit named Hapramko Bonga. The family deities reside in one of the rooms of the home, and Naike is the sacred uh, specialist of the Santhal. The Santhal offers sacrifices in the name of deities and spirits to please them. The sacrifice of he goat, he sheep, cock, chicks, pigeon, duck, egg, etc. is made in order to please the deities and spirits. Other items of worship are curd, ghee, dhup, sun fried rice, vermilion, red thread, haldi, chandan, etc. The Santhals also believe in Hindu gods and goddesses like Durga, Kali, Bhagavati, Mansa, Manda, Lakshmi, Saraswati, Shiva, and Hanuman, etc. The Santhal also believe in bhut prep and witchcraft, whose attack is neutralized by the village priest uh, as witchcraft doctor. And the Santhal supreme deities are Sin Chando, that is sun, and uh, Ninda Chando, that is moon. They celebrate many festivals and ceremonies. They celebrate Pirok before sowing the seeds in the fields, and Richer is celebrated in July, August for rich harvest. And they celebrate Sohrai in the month of November, December. And next, Sarhul is one of the most important festival of Santhal tribe. And different tribes celebrate this with different names. Munda tribe calls it Sarhul, Pura calls it Khadi, or San, uh, and for Santhal, it is also called Bahaparat. Or for Khadiya tribe, it is Jakor. It is the festival related to nature. It is celebrated on the Tritya day of uh, Sukla Paksh in the month of Chaitra. There is an important role of Sal tree in this festival. Sal tree is the base of the life of uh, tribals and it is being used at every stage of its life. Uh, due to this reason, the tribals uh, thank them and consider them sacred and worship them. The tribals believe that their bonga lives in the Sal tree. And there must be the sal tree in Sarna and Pahan worships with the Sarai pool, that is flowers of sal. This is a festival of four days. On the first day of the festival, they sprinkle the fish water uh, in their home and outside and inside both. On the second day, they keep fast and hangs the Sarai pool on each door of their home, given by the Pahan that is considered as the symbol of happiness. And on the third day, they establish the Sarai pool at uh, Sarna Asthal and worship their god and goddesses where they give him to their god uh, as the Sad, that is known as Bali. And next, I would like to discuss uh, the Manji regime, that is administrative system of Santhal tribe. Uh, yeah, yeah, next yeah. Slide. Yeah. yeah. The ruling system of Santhal tribe is known as uh, the Manji Pargana system. And the Santhals established a political structure resembling Saurya Paharya tribe. Each Santhal village has a panchayat led by Manji, as well as the religious leader of the community known as Naike. And Manji is the village chief and is vested with both executive and judicial authority. 
he calls a meeting of the gram sabha to resolve disputes in the community collects rent and grants the consent to marry it has a helper who goes by the name of jogmanji jogmanji supervises society's members for their behavior and settles marital disputes it council is significant at time of birth and marriage his work is regarded as authentic when manji is not there and uh, real estate uh, real estate disputes divorces interpersonal conflicts and other issues are settled in the village panchayat uh, government intervention is required if uh, someone is killed the power of traditional panchayats has weakened as result of establishment of the government panchayats yet uh, both organizations are cooperating Parganath still handles the social, marital, and other issues facing all the villages in her region. And next, I would like to discuss about the details of the important posts or uh, organizations and uh, related facts related to Manji Pargana um, government system. Uh, first one is Manji. In this system of governance, every village has a panchayat whose head is called Manji, and Manji is mainly responsible for the operation of various systems of the village. various administrative and heroic powers are available to manji to make successful precautionary arrangements it resolves the matters of land property divorce mutual disputes etc through the gram panchayat government intervention in murder case is mandatory and manji gets the right to, from collecting rent to establishing marriage relationship next is jog manji uh, there is an assistant to help the manji to run the governance related works smoothly which is called jog manji it works to give important advice on matters related to both uh, birth and marriage as well as solves the matters related to the marriage and next is uh, jog paramik uh, jog paramik conducts the duties in the absence of uh, jog manji next post is bhagdo praja uh, in the settlement of disputes uh, discussions are held with some senior peoples of the village who are called bhagdo praja and uh, after that paramik in the absence of manji his functions are conducted by paramik it is also called sab manji uh, next uh, post is godayat it serves as the secretary of manji and the task of conveying information about uh, any festival or event to the villagers is done by godayat only he unites people in one place on various occasions it also collects information related to the family of the village and next uh, post is parganayak in this system 15 to 20 villages uh, join together to form a pargana whose head is called parganayak and disputes between different villages are settled in parganas the matter which is not accessible by manji is referred to deswanji and the unresolved matters in deswanji's panchayat are transferred to parganayak it uh, look like a democratic political system uh, next is disom pargana it is located in on parganaik's high star and the cases which are not resolved in the meeting of parganaik is transferred to disom pargana it is not found in all regions uh, next post is maike the religious head of the villages is called maike and judgment on religious offenses is given by maike only next is manji uh, it is also known as mode manji and mode is a term uh, which is used in santhali language mode means uh, it is counting like 1 2 3 4 5 uh, and mode means five so the uh, group of five peoples is known as mode manji or desh manji and uh, they are the helper of parganayak uh, who was the head of five to eight villages thus a parganayak has more than uh, one helper and uh, bitlaha is a term which is the most served recitation of this administrative system which is given to the guilty at the bottom of bitlaha the use of all the apprents is removed from the village and there is also a management of robbing bitlaha's saja for giving caste banquet to the pure village to pure the village while apologizing uh, for dosi's door and uh, next term is sendra bansi on the basis of the rule of 1856 legal recognition has been given to manji pargana system now i would like to uh, discuss that 
the way of the life uh, the way of the life the people are changing very fast and the changing lifestyle of the santhal people uh, the people who are living in the interior part of the dense forest of chota nagpur plateau uh, from time immemorial are now in the midest towns and due to explanation of minerals and setting up of mines and factories in uh, that forest area as a result the people from different regions different races and different societies having different customs and traditions are rushing to that area in search of employment and uh, uh, many of them getting settled there in their itself therefore the people of uh, whom we call as aborigines uh, that is original people of being diluted day by day and their way of life is getting disturbed and due to this disturbance customs and traditions what they have they have and uh, these all are diminishing gradually and it seems that within the gap of one generation uh, many valuable traditions may be out of the sea and that's my uh, end of my presentation very nice thank you archana now you have to tell us what i i don't know whether you heard when i was talking to hemant is there a situation where people are is a decision is taken by the manji or is it that they in whatever i mean they have a discussion with the parties and the parties reach a settlement how does that work have you have you looked at that yes sir i have looked uh, when uh, there is any problem means uh, problem between two parties then both uh, of the party uh, means any of the party may go to the manji who is known as manji haram and uh, he will explain uh, their problem that what is a problem between the both of them and after they, that they call a meeting of uh, um, manji panchayat manji panchayat at pargana and uh, all uh, the peoples of all the parties or the uh, peoples of village who are not uh, of that uh, dispute they may also uh, see that uh, that what's going on there and after uh, listening uh, about uh, listening both the parties uh, they take decision they take, finally the decision is uh, uh, i mean told by uh, manji haram but uh, after negotiating both the parties he, he may take the decision because that's what we have to basically get into is that if it is a decision taken and they have to follow it obviously then it is not mediation but if there is a point when those parties have a choice that after whatever negotiation and everything happened and then the manji says okay you have settled this like this so that is the end of it so if that happens then it's mediation so we have to be able to distinguish the two it's important because like we were discussing with him and that the point is that if it is decision and with the changing society they don't want to listen to them they just because those decisions don't have any appeal or anything so in that kind of situation i mean we have to then talk to the manji and say you should be looking at mediation so i'm just thinking that we need to consider exactly what's happening there have you i mean looked at it from that perspective so i am not means actually that what you are trying to say that mediation means we may say that that is mediation because actually we are not Uh, we don't know that uh, mediation is uh, only happens between two parties because always we have seen that there is one head and uh, who uh, takes the decision after uh, listening from both the parties okay so basically it's a decision so basically it becomes arbitration and not mediation but if the both of them is any of the party who is not uh, means uh, who is not able to Uh, take that decision he may uh, ask again and he may uh, say that i am not uh, satisfied by this decision and then again the meet, uh, means meeting is called again and again till they are not satisfied okay so that means finally it is the parties have to be satisfied with what happens so something like that maybe because maybe like i said i i am putting words there maybe <laughs> I, the situation is different but i'm just i want to believe that there is mediation happening i'm just i will just put that's why i'm saying that maybe it is that the parties want to reach a certain settlement and 
then obviously certain point they can't so the manji says okay you must do this i mean i'm just thinking what is happening there but have you sat in one of these meetings you sat in one of the meetings uh yes sir i have sat means yeah. uh, not sat actually i have uh, means in my village when i went there uh, there was i think since when uh, panchayat you may say that panchayat was called and i was there then i was listening uh, the both the parties and how the decision was taken by the manji so you want to tell us what happened i mean how what was the proceeding how did it happen uh, actually uh, there was a case that uh, means uh, uh, one of the cow who uh, uh, grazed means uh, ate in the harvest of other people other persons uh, field and then uh, she she had complained that uh, i will take that cow i have uh, uh, i have cast that cow so i will uh, take the, this cow and i will keep it then uh, she can go uh, went to the manji and she complained that uh, i as i have cast this cow so i will keep that uh, this cow in my home then uh, and the other people uh, whose cow was actually belong to that people and they all were called and other villages or uh, villages also went there and uh, then uh, the uh, the decision was taken that if uh, he will have to give uh, some uh, means uh, rice or pulses as uh, punishment means or otherwise he can take uh, means keep that cow then uh, as the cow is very, the price of cow is very high so other the party people of other party he are ready to give punishment as decided as decided by the manji hara okay. so basically there was no discussion with the person who owned the cow and the woman there was no discussion there they just put the whole facts to the manji and the manji they put the manji okay so they were yes, not sir. having there was no Kind, the kind of a negotiation happening between the parties so it was just like a court system it was like a court she said that he, they have eaten the harvest they said i mean the whatever they agreed to that i don't think they disputed that so so i'm just thinking that it's like a court not like not mediation so we have to see if there was any situation earlier where mediation happened so you are going to do that arjuna you can do it later you can go back to them and tell them what mediation is that look the, the, the mediation is where the solution is not imposed on the parties so does that also happen like as we can have a discussion again later okay. maybe on the last day of the symposium also we can have a discussion on this because i'm really interested to see that because look you saw one case in this case maybe there wasn't much to do maybe i mean the look they could, could have been negotiation between the parties but the other one understood that the cow is eaten the half is so there has been a loss to the woman so obviously they agreed to that but i think of, i mean or talk to them maybe there is something that we might bring out from there let's see because finally if the, it's decision making then we have to tell them you should also try mediation let the parties between themselves settle the matter because that way it's the long term solution because in this case they agreed to what the manji said supposing they did not agree with the manji then what you're saying is a good system that they can go back to the manji and again have a discussion on it another meeting will happen they will explain why this is not reasonable so maybe that but tell me this mode manji is a term which has been used traditionally so there have been five people earlier also yes because... sir i mean in panthal and just uh, one means ek Means yeah. one means a, two means two, and thal uh, me gote means one, and baria means two, priya means three, and mode means five. And the group of five people is known as uh, mode. Because I, I really want to understand because traditionally also that means it was five people. So I want to understand what is this thing about like panchayat also has five people. We could oh, okay. everywhere. So what is this? Have you ever tried to see why five people? <laughs> what is the reason for five people? Not sure, but uh, further I will go there. Then I will ask that why it is necessary to have group of five people. Because maybe they feel that if there are five people, it will be more fair. 
if there is one person it will become a, a, a kind uh-huh. of autocratic system maybe three they might not have a maybe a more it won't be as impartial as it should be but if there must be something some reason to the five because this five you will hear from the traditional panchayat also but but have you i mean is there a concept of i mean you said this traditional panchayat and the government what the created the panchayat so is there a difference between the two because what the, what we have under the under our law today that panchayat and the earlier panchayat was there some difference means a panchayat uh, formed by government and this more manji yeah means uh, the panchayat formed by government the uh, head of that panchayat is elected means people used to elect uh, them and the victor is uh, the head of panchayat but in more in manji system it is uh, like um, means uh, the uh, son of uh, who is manji at present and uh, in next uh, his son will be the uh, manji of uh, okay. the village so it's, so it's like a ruler it's like the king kind of system that yes. the son son will become the manji yes. okay but what is what is the feeling you got when you were sitting in this meeting what is the feeling how was the proceeding means uh, they all came and uh, actually it was uh, called by one of the person uh, who is uh, the uh, helper of manji and when they uh, used to um, say their problem to the manji then uh, manji uh, uh, took uh, chooses a day then when we will sit together and then there we will discuss the problem and after that uh, discussing the problem we will uh, come to a decision that what should be happen and uh, one day is fixed there yeah, and time also then all uh, is uh, earlier when uh, drum was beaten that uh, there is one um, means there is one problem we may say that there is one problem and uh, the manji is going to sit to, to listen the problems and uh, after he yeah, I means one person used to uh, take that drum and beats to uh, to the whole village and after listening the sound of drum the people used to gather there the place which is fixed to sit uh, and they all came and after that manji uh, starts that uh, he asks that what's the problem and then both the parties uh, explains that what uh, what is his problem what is her problem and after listening both the parties uh, manji uh, means and manji asks uh, all the other four persons that uh, what uh, means what is the um, i will say that what you may want to say is all persons are uh, allowed to uh, give their opinion so which means the other people who are sitting there can also suggest something yes, they can suggest yes, that they can all are yeah but all like, are allowed to say but like hemant was saying that in that case in the, in that tribe the who this person is sitting on the ground with everyone so he, was it like that or they are sitting on some high pedestal and other people are sitting down what how is it work no always sitting means uh, on the ground okay so it's not that someone sits on the manji sits no. on top or something like that no. okay so but, but but in the the written language santhali i mean how can you read that do you want to want to read that language no because uh, script is different the script of santhali language is old chiki so that yeah. is not something that are you learning it or not you must learn it i am trying to learn this uh, here is my colleagues who are from santhali tribe right? and they belong from santhal pargana and uh, i am learning from them Well, I was just seeing a picture of the script. Very interesting script it is. I, I don't know. I'm just having a look. So, Hemant, any things that you want to discuss? Any questions you want to ask, Archana? Is Hemant there? I can see him there, but I mean, I don't know. His, his video is off. So, I think basically, I think I, two things will happen. One is you will ask them that is there any situation where. there is a mediation which happens or is it always a decision taken by the manji let's find out 
because there might be some cases when that happens and if it's not happening then are people agreeing always to that decision or are they going to courts is that happening and in cases of crimes what is happening there what happens then in, case, is... in cases of crime manji is not uh, means uh, he doesn't take the decision uh, always the case is went to court so between them they will never discuss that it will all go straight there mm -hmm. so they don't, but yeah. is there was there a traditional system to settle that if there was a crime before the courts came in yeah. sir i don't know yes you will have to so now you will have to find out arshana this is important because uh, various parts of the world they had their systems obviously look courts came in only with colonization so before that there must have been some system so we, we must find out because otherwise it'll get lost because look i mean you know, it's been so many years hundreds of years since that happened so was it totally destroyed by the uh, the court system and people don't even know or maybe they have some knowledge of what was happening let's find out that right? yeah and what about the religious head what kind of matters go to the religious head you uh, said the nike the nike means whenever the uh, any type of festival is held like uh, sarhul or uh, other festival then he used to do um, prayer in since there is one fixed place uh, where they in all the villagers used to go and pray and um, all the people are not permitted to enter in that place enter at that place yeah. then uh, naike who used to uh, do uh, worship at that place and he used to give prasad and uh, in uh, actually in the marriage uh, this whole marriage system uh, like other uh, other caste or other society pandit priest is not called in santhal tribe it is the naike he used to perform all the rituals of uh, the marriage ceremony or birth ceremony and that's why he is called, uh, known as the religious head of uh, the village but the naike has no role to play when dis disputes happen there is nothing only the manji is there means all uh, all set there they all give their opinion but uh, the decision is taken by manji okay he may sit there and he may give the opinion what he want to say but the decision is taken by the head so now basically now you're going to find out situations where decision is not taken parties settle the matter themselves let's see some examples of that the other thing is traditionally what was happening for crimes that is important yeah. i think we have to see what happens there and i mean anything relation to dispute maybe there is some more information we can get so little more we should i think study because otherwise then we have to like i was telling him and also we have we should go there and tell them that please try to you, there should be mediation should be used or maybe we can also i mean i don't know whether we can actually tell the people directly because the manji might not like it but we should i mean the idea being that the people should be able to settle the matter themselves they should not need to go this is like a court i mean like i said i mean manji seems to be a court system so if people can actually will they want to maybe that also you can ask them do they want to settle the matter themselves and also the thing is that look there is a person who can be a mediator and that person will have different qualities and a manji is a different kind of system that is going to be like the court like a judge so maybe you can ask them that is there someone in their village who actually has that those qualities to help them reach a settlement themselves maybe you can ask that question also let's see maybe they know because i've talked to some people in some villages and they've said that they after telling them what mediation is and the parties decide and no one decides for you they have identified people that says so and so does it so maybe that system is also happening you can check just check that yeah. because that is a totally different person a different kind of system happening and then the manji system will be a different system so let's find out 
then we'll get to know that there are mediators in the village we'll find out so then we and if this mediators are actually doing mediation let's find out because what happens is a lot of focus goes on to the manji panchayat then lot of focus goes there not realizing sometimes that people are going to these people because they trust them because look finally if it is a court like manji functions like a court then obviously people know the manji will tell them what to do and maybe they don't want that let's see i don't know look this we have to find out we have to ask people so maybe there's something will come out of that so there is work we have to do there so you are going to do that archana next time we meet you will have some study on More, this part uh, yeah on the mediation part of it because they, obviously this system has been going on for a long time manji everyone knows about that and talk but we have to differentiate the two so archana some concluding remarks uh concluding remarks uh, is it would be better if they would uh, mediate between both the parties and uh, i may, means uh, i will try to discover that uh, earlier was there any uh, this type of uh, system or maybe it uh, prevails in the society but i am unknown so i will do more study and uh, more field work on this and uh, try to get more information about this yeah that'll be good i think we because i think this is something which i feel is important because otherwise if they lose faith in the manji and then they start going to court that will change the whole structure of that community because then you've got some external system which comes into play and then the community also gets affected i mean finally this that community should not get affected so i think yeah perfect So thank you very much Arjuna. Thank you sir. Good you've done your research. Now only thing is little more research is required. <laughs> so and I please try more. Yeah and please watch other sessions because there've been some interesting yeah. discussions and some certain interesting things people have brought in from Canada from Africa. So but tell me is are there some in the, the things like mining projects and all which are affecting the community out there? Yes, uh, it's affecting because the people are migrating. Means uh, wherever uh, they means in Jharkhand, most of the places like the district of uh, Dhanbad and uh, in Hazaribagh also some blocks where coal is fine um, is found. And when uh, the government uh, used to know that there is a coal, then uh, uh, government is uh, means the uh, government is taking them to other uh, region. and providing only a quarter like uh, house and they are uh, living that means mainly they are migrated being migrated from their original place because and, what you... uh, due to migration due to migration uh, their culture their language it's also means um, they are like uh, forgetting their culture and uh, yeah absolutely that has to be looked at i have also, I have also forgotten my language due to migration because my father settled to bihar and then uh, we were not in touch of our village ancestral village and we forgot our language so so, so arjuna is going to now go to her uh, village and going to stay there and see what the system is out there <laughs> no i'll tell you why yes. i was asking about the mining projects is because we had one session by luis ore who's in peru So in Peru, they have used mediation in when communities are affected by mining projects. So have a look at that session and see how we can use it in communities which are affected here in Jharkhand or I don't know in Bihar or wherever. I mean, I'm sure I don't look. I I don't know because in Peru, the community they say owns the surface, so the community has to be taken into account. here situation is different might be different but still we can sensitize the government that mediation should be used in these situations because what you said right now that the basic culture language and all gets affected if people have to be dislocated from where they stay so for that reason there should be some attempt to work with the mining companies with the new auction that happens whenever so there should be some kind of Process, process there. So please take this up also. Yes. Arjun, a lot of work for you. A lot of work for you. Yes. <laughs> yes.
<laughs> so next time i want i will please whenever you are ready whenever you are ready whenever you have found out we can have one discussion separately with you on this issue and we can ask hemant also to do the similar study and then let's see what we can do what are the solutions available and that's why i'm saying watch that thing with luis ore also and he has come on various uh, other events of mine so maybe you can search on youtube also mediator vikram luis ore you'll find some have a look at what they've done and then i i think you can maybe take it up with the government and see if they can be some some kind of understanding where we can use mediation right so thank you very much and you. please or you can join other sessions zoom links the zoom link is the same 31st yes. 7 o'clock uh, india time please drop in for the i sent you a calendar invite also for the learnings yes. and key takeaways so by then maybe you have watched some sessions so you can then give your point of view of what was discussed right so thank you and if hemant is listening thank you hemant if he's not there then okay so let me just